Okay, the vehicle's in the shop. I did verify the complaint. The brake pedal is super low, and it it feels like we have a loss of fluid. It's low, I could tell, but it's just not low enough for that light to come on yet because it's not down to the level sensor. A lot of times you go right there see if it's low because if it's raining outside and whatnot, it's hard to tell what's what and if there is a leak. So we definitely know that brake fluid's going somewhere, so now we gotta determine where. Just at a quick glance as I'm checking the brake fluid, I can tell it's not coming from the master stone, or at least not externally on this side of the brake booster. And a lot of times you'll see if it is the master cylinder, it'll be leaking right down underneath. It'll actually start lifting the paint and you'll see a lot of wetness going on. Now on this vehicle it has four wheel disc brakes because there is a chance with rear drum that you could have something going wrong with a internal wheel cylinder or whatnot or a brake shoe came apart and that can happen with these type of brake systems as well or a faulty master cylinder like I mentioned earlier however since we are seeing a loss of fluid it's evident that there's a leak somewhere so now we're going to take it underneath the vehicle and we're going to see if we see any signs of brake fluid. Now a lot of times it could be a caliper, a brake hose, a brake line that rusted out or whatnot. So sometimes you can just take a look at the rims and look in and you may see a little brake fluid on the rim itself. I did pump the brake a couple times and as I can see on that left front I'm seeing signs of something wet. So we're going to focus our attention over there like I said, just take a look at the around the rims. Okay, and sure enough, we have signs of brake fluid around that left front. So we're going to have to remove that wheel. And as you can see, the caliper is a little wet. It's coming from up higher. And that brake line. Okay, I hope you don't mind the background noise, they're out there doing lawn service. However, prior to jacking up the vehicle, I'm going to take and break the lug nuts loose. We already know that the brake line's leaking. We picked up both sides, so I'm going to break the other side loose as well. Okay, I got the vehicle jacked up, placed on jack stands. Oh yeah. Guys, these yoga mats. They work great. I had that one for probably for about two years and it saves the knees. Now that we removed the wheel, it's real obvious where the leak's coming from and it's this left front brake hose. I got the wheel cranked all the way to the left to give me better access to the complete line. We're fortunate enough that it is the brake hose that blew and not the steel line because a lot of times when a steel line blows it's quicker and easier to fabricate your own so you got to bend them, flare them, double flare them and we'll, I'll step you through that in a, a separate demonstration in another video. However, today's repair is going to be relatively easy since it is the brake hose as long as this fitting comes loose out of the hose. As you can see, we got one clip here, clip here, and then it actually screws into the caliper. So we're going to have to remove this brake line first and then we'll, we'll spin the hose out. I'm using a 13 millimeter line wrench. A line wrench pretty much goes all the way around except for it has an opening so you can place it over the brake line. This upper brake hose goes into a bracket that should retain it from spinning. However, if it does start spinning, we'll try to get a wrench on the top side. But we're good. I'll take and unscrew that. And now our brake line is free. I have a drain pan placed underneath to catch the brake fluid. With these metal clips, you could grab them with a pair of pliers and try to wiggle them out. However, you could most times get behind them and twist like this, just like that, to give them a pop. And they usually come loose for you if the brake line's close enough. As you see, she's ready to pop out. That way you save it without bending it, and then I just pull the rest away out of pliers. That's pretty much all it is. Give you a demonstration on this one, as you can see. Or you could just take and pry it like so. However, I didn't have much room to pry 
underneath so I twist it. I'll just pop it the rest of the way. Now this line should wiggle up and out like so. Same thing out of here. Now we're removed from the brackets. We're going to break this one loose. And that one is a 14 millimeter. There you go. I guess another thing we should try doing before we go too much further, because we don't want to put the new brake line on, the brake hose on, and then find out that we can't bleed it because the bleeders are frozen in the caliper. We'll see if we could uh, break that bleeder loose. I'm just going to finish removing this hose. Okay, and there's our brake hose. I'm just going to set it in the drain pan. Now this brake line up here, guys, it could you probably could get away with using a half inch line wrench. However, my 13 actually fit it nice, along with my 14 fit the lower portion better than my half inch and my 9 16 Because 14 and 9 16 are relatively close, and the same goes for 13 and half inch. So this is 3 8 Now I want to hurt to spray a little bit of penetrating oil on there. However, this one looks relatively good. So I'm not having any doubts. And as you can see, it comes right loose. Got the new brake line. You want to match it up to the old one. Make sure it's the same. This one is. So we're going to start by installing into the bottom. Because you want to remember, guys, this side is a rigid line so this whole line is going to want to spin in order to tighten it up. You want to get it nice and tight. You don't have to kill it. Right there is plumb. Let's see how this lines up. It actually lines up perfect. I'll take and reinstall one of our clips. I just use a big pair of channel locks and seat them in like so. And we're going to take and install our top line. And screw that in. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose. Because if this pops up out and you tighten it up in a bad spot, it's not going to fit back in where it belongs. Therefore, I'm going to take and install the clip prior to going any further. Seat it all the way back like so. Then we're going to take our 13 or half inch. We're going to tighten it up. Same thing with this one. You don't have to kill it. But you want to go a little bit past snug because you don't know if that flare is, especially the double flares, if it's 100% compressed. So this will help finish compressing that flare. If it's not perfect, even though this isn't a new line, you're kind of changing the proportion of that flare because you're going onto a new seat, if that makes sense. You got that double flare and it's kind of. I can show you here. This one actually uses a bubble flare if we would have looked at it. And it's going up in and it's going against that inner taper. So it's a it's a different shape. So we're actually forming that shape. So sometimes you'll tighten it up and you'll come back later and it's leaking a little bit. It's because that that bubble flare wasn't 100% seated in its new seat. So I usually just give it another quick yank after a short time. It's not necessary. It's just a matter of preference. I'm going to go repeat the same process on the other side and then I'll come back and demonstrate how to bleed them. Right side's all replaced. Bleeder does break loose. This one uses dot three, and we'll take it up to the full mark. In this step, I'm leaving the cap off the brake reservoir. If you're real observant, you'll notice that I replaced just the brake pads. 
I know that's not the correct way to do it. However, they got extremely saturated with brake fluid. So I just took and replaced just the pads itself. The rotors are in decent shape and the pads were getting super low anyhow. The reason I left the cap off the reservoir is because I'm going to do what they call a gravity bleed to begin with. Just as an example, your reservoir is up high. So anything lower than that point will bleed out eventually. And since this is the uppermost portion of the brake caliper, that's why they put the bleeder in that spot. We're going to just take and break the bleeder loose. We're not going to pump the brake pedal or anything at this point. We're simply going to let it gravity bleed. Now this process is time consuming, however when you're by yourself it's one of the best methods. So I'm going to take and break the other side loose as well and just let this gravity bleed for a moment. And after a short time you'll see brake fluid and air coming out of that bleeder. So as you can see this one started gravity bleeding almost instantly. I'm going to take and snug this up. Now I'm going to give you a demonstration how to use a vacuum pump to bleed the brakes. Because a lot of times when you're in a shop, you may be by yourself or somebody else is busy on their own work. And you got to do this stuff by yourself in many occasions. We could do the traditional pumping of the brakes and be done relatively quick. But I just wanted to demonstrate that there is ways you could do it by yourself. And if you look on here, it says two pump. So this one here is going to the brake bleeder. And this is going to go down inside the brake fluid. You'll see bubbles up in here even when there's no air per se in the system. Plug your vacuum pump in. Break that bleeder loose a little bit. Just start pumping. And as you can see we got the brake fluid coming. Now we're pulling it down from the reservoir. My bleeder's a little too tight. Now you're seeing the brake fluid flow a little better. The last two methods that you see me demonstrate, I use more often than not because I'm here by myself in most cases. However, if you have a second person, you could bleed it the traditional way. Have the other person go in the vehicle. You'll lock down all your bleeders and they'll go in and start pumping the pedal nice and slow like push it down one time let it come back up push it down like a couple seconds each stroke you don't want to go pumping it like crazy because sometimes your master cylinder can get stuck down I've only had that happen once but that was enough so just do it nice and slow one two three and hold when the pedal pumps up if you release it for too long and you step on it again, you'll notice that the pedal wants to go right to the floor. And that's because there's air still in the system. So have them pump it up until they have a nice pedal. And then you'll come over to the bleeder. A lot of times what I'll use is a socket because the fluid's going to want to spray out. So if you have a socket and ratchet, it's going to spray and hit the ratchet and actually run down inside the socket into your can. And then you'll just take and you'll you'll break it loose as they have pressure on the brake pedal. Hold it down. One more time. And the air, you'll hear the air and the fluid come out. And then you'll close it and you'll repeat that until all you hear is solid fluid. And you'll be able to tell the difference. It's always best practice to follow the bleeding recommendations for your make and model. On this vehicle, it's not going to be necessary for me to bleed the rear brakes because we really didn't lose that much brake fluid to begin with. 
because it was caught relatively quickly. In addition to that, it uses a dual piston master cylinder, so there's a primary and secondary piston, in addition to a split reservoir. So there's actually a separate small sump for the rear brakes and the front. So the brake reservoir, we noticed, dropped uh, quite a bit. However, once it got down to a certain level, it'll reach the split sump and just continue draining the front portion. And you'll still have the remaining sump to give you rear brakes. We didn't even get down to that level, so I'm not worried that we introduced any air into the rear portion. So say you were in a position you had to bleed all four wheels on this particular vehicle. The recommended procedure is to start with the furthest wheel from the master cylinder. So that would be the passenger side right rear. Make sure your fluid's topped off. Start with your bleeding procedure at that point. Then move to the left rear. Then to the right front. And to the left front. Remember this is a split dual piston master cylinder so there's no reason to go caddy corner like you would traditionally on some other makes and models. Sometimes when I'm gravity bleeding I'll loosen up all four bleeders and just let it sit. Once you're all done, brakes are all bled, you're no longer going to contaminate anything. I know I didn't get any brake fluid on the new pads, however I don't want that to happen once I start driving it. Therefore, I'm going to take and clean everything down with brake cleaner. I'm not going to concentrate on the pad portion because I already cleaned everything there and I don't want to spray off the grease that I applied to the pad. Take and reinstall the caps on the bleeders. Make sure you're up on the center portion of the wheel. Once you're down off the jack stand, torque in the stack. Repeat the same process on any remaining tires that you had off. I'm going to take and top the fluid off. When we did the traditional step, I reinstalled the cap because sometimes it will tend to want to spray up out of the reservoir. Right, here's our max mark and I'm down right around that ledge. And I can just about see through it. Now the problem we may have since I filled this up, it won't be so bad because it has new brake pads on the front. However, when we go to replace the brake pads on the back, even though these ones are in good shape, when you compress the caliper, we want to remember to suck some of this out, otherwise it's going to overflow. A lot of people add brake fluid, but you can use your brake fluid to tell how low your brake pads are. Because if your brake fluid starts getting real low, if there isn't a leak, that means your pads are wearing down and they're pretty low. And usually you just leave it that way, leave the brake fluid low, because when you compress the caliper to put the new brakes and rotors and whatnot on, that level is going to come back up because the fluid that's missing from the reservoir is filling up your caliper hence why when you compress it it fills the reservoir back up okay as you can see with the vehicle not running our pedal's real high however once we start it up the pedal's going to drop and a lot of people may feel like the pedal is not as high as it used to be or it's just a I would like to say like a figment of your imagination per se because you're pumping it up and you're feeling how high it is after the repair without the vehicle running but when you start it up it's going to drop down to about the level of the gas pedal and that's what I usually use as a good roll of thumb if you drop down lower than that gas pedal then you have some problems as you see we go right down where the gas goes at. And then it's pretty solid. So I know we're good. Alright, we're going to take it for a test drive. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned. As a courtesy check, while you're underneath the hood and you top off your brake fluid, it doesn't hurt to look over the remaining fluids because you may just save them in the long run.